So let's hold on for a second. Let me see if there's anybody around. Hey guys, what's going on? Hope you're doing all well. I'll be start. I'll be started with you just in a sec. Let me hold on, so I can hear you. Okay. Do you guys hear me well? Just give me a. Just give me a wave up. All right. All good. You heard me well. Great. So. Uh, I don't want to take too much of your time. I'll just do a quick five, ten minutes and take some of your questions. I just wanted to really update you all on the horrifying incident that it took place yet again in Syria. This time it's in Douma City. Douma City placed in the eastern part of Ghouta. Ghouta has been subjected to a vicious, brutal, relentless bombardments by the Assad regime on the ground and his foreign militia. Uh, supported by air, by, uh, with the Russian Air Force, with all its might, bombarding these, these parts of Syria, uh, whatever what it got uh, from the sky. And that has led, this campaign has took about 52 days. And, uh, and of course, uh, you all know what happened in the past couple of weeks. Tens of thousands of families, that makes about, that makes about, uh, uh, 280,000 people from the eastern part of Ghouta has been forcefully deported. They call it evacuation. They've been deported from eastern Ghouta to other parts in Syria, mainly in the northern part and, of course, Idlib and the refugee camps. Some of these families chose to stay in the refugee camps near uh, the Assad regime-controlled area. What happened last night is something beyond imagination. It's something nobody has, has really uh, expected to, do, to, be, to be implemented in such uh, critical times and moments. Assad regime again defies the world uh, 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 international community and do something that, uh, that we Syrians expected that he would have done because you know how we knew that? Because... His notorious, uh, one very well-known uh, journalist called uh, Hussein Murtada, he's very, very highly, highly uh, close to the Assad regime. Just about 12 hours before the massacre took place, uh, Hussein Murtada has been uh, videotaping a live session right in the outskirts of Douma city. And he's been talking behind him the mass bombardments of the civilians in Douma. And he said, and he stated, that we are now bombarding these areas. And soon after that, we, it will follow a mass ground invasion to these parts of eastern Ghouta. And he stated, that is the critical point, he stated that if this mass ground invasion does not succeed expect something extremely big is going to take place. Something you have not expected this before and you have not seen before. And he said something you have not seen before. And you guys in Duma, you better get out now before we really hit you hard. And 11 hours later, the massacre occur. People, as you all know, in, in, in Duma city, they have, they have bunkered themselves underground. So they, they've found refuge in, in, a, in a distant uh, parts of their homes, underground, in bathrooms, kitchens, and they've all gathered up and they've slept in a very small space uh, away from the shrapnels and the, all the bombings that has been continuously raining down on the city. And they thought they were safe, yet uh, it is not that safe for the gases to leak in. Assad regime used yet again the sarin gas mixed with some nerve agent that nobody knows about it yet. And he used these nerve gas and the chlorine, chlorine rockets as well, hitting these areas multiple times and suffocating these people instantly. They've died a horrifying death. Uh, men holding their children, uh, uh, you know, uh, elder mothers, you know, uh, gather around with their, with their loved ones. And they all died instantly in these. And these images has been circulating around the world now. And you all have, probably have seen them. I have posted a few of them just 
since the, in the past 24 hours. You should all share these videos. Now, my point here, I wanted to tell you why would Assad use Assad, uh, sarin gas and chemical weapons again on, on, on civilians in this, in this city? Because he know that he can get away with it. He know that Russia got his back. Uh, he knows that the international community is a total, I'm not going to say he's a, they're totally absent. I'm not going to say a bad word. Now. I'm trying to keep my mouth clean. Uh, Assad regime knows all these facts that he knows that nobody would do anything remember last year today last year exactly a year ago I have made a, uh, we've, we've all talked about the massacre that took place in Khan Sheikhoun Khan Sheikhoun also got extremely high uh, uh, attention around the world uh, that, that killed about 100 people. And, and Donald Trump, of course, wanted to flex his muscles and he went and bombed a few, few roads in the Hmeimin uh, uh, Air Force where the Russians were based. Of course, he knew how to fight them beforehand. They told him, I'm, I'm going to bomb in 24 seconds, so 24 hours, so please just you know, move away your people so nobody get, get hurt so I can look good in the media that I have done something for Syria. That, this, this type of theater, of course, not, is not going to go go with down with us we we know we know that this theater is just a, a, a play to somehow shake the responsibility away on what should be done in syria against assad and assad assad knows all these facts so what happened after the khan Sheikhoun last year nothing assad just you know expanded his controlled area and nothing really happened so this is the shitty situation we're in now that gives emboldened assad regime to do what he did just last night, and uh, and and yesterday, yesterday, uh, according to the information we've got, the sarin gas, chlorine gas that has uh, killed so far, so far it has killed about uh, uh, 185 people, confirmed dead. Of course, there are places that nobody can get in, so there are still people to be uh, rescued or being excavated out of the rubble. But the situation is this, over 1,200 people are suffering from suffocation. Uh, why would Assad, like I said, do this? Uh, there is a reason to do that. You know, Russia has been in the past couple uh, weeks negotiating with the final, uh, with, the, with the controlled area in Duma, we are, which are called, of course, Jaish al-Islam. Jaish al-Islam has been in full control of, of Duma city for all that time. And Russia has... Uh, uh, offered Jaysh al-Islam to get out uh, and evacuate from Duma and, and, and give control to uh, Assad. And Jaysh al-Islam said, no, we are not going to get out uh, because our civilians wanted to stay. So uh, we, we could suggest, they've suggested to the Russians that the civilians can stay because they wanted to stay in their homes and they don't mind being there. Uh, but uh, the armed rebels can go out to other parts, can evacuate. Uh, what happened here, uh, Russia agreed on this uh, uh, proposal. Uh, now the Russians moved forward with this proposal to the other people on the ground, of course, Assad and the Iranians. The Iranians played a very dirty part here. We have to really underline this dirty part that they've done. They have uh, completely turned down this offer. So let me reiterate this. The Iranians turned down the offer made by Russia to evacuate armed uh, Free Syrian Army from Duma. They turned it down and they've stated nobody, everybody should be evacuated, even the civilians. So the Iranians are implementing what they have started seven years ago to uh, their own demographic war against Syria and Syrians. I'm talking about the 85% Sunni Syrians. These Sunni Syrians, uh, half of them right now are refugees outside Syria and millions of them are inside Syria still. So this is the situation. Iran did uh, turn down the offer wanting all these 85,000 left in Duma to be out of Duma so they can replace them with another people. Pay that attention. It's a demographic war led by Iran. Uh, Russia doesn't give a shit, you know, who takes control of that area. So the Russians got back to the Jewish Islam and they said, we're not going to move forward because the 
the of course the Iranians are not really agreeing fully with us and we cannot really move forward so y'all has to get out the Jewish Islam and the civilians they both agreed to, that they will both stay inside Duma regardless of what's going to happen so they were given about a week time to get out from from Duma and they didn't so what happened you must punish them and how they punish them by chemical attack yet again another horrendous war crime uh, the most appalling way possible, seeing those young people, uh, the children, women, men, all dead, with foams coming out of their mouth, and no way for them to, to, be, to, be, to be rescued at all. They were found dead, they've been dead for hours, until the people really managed to get to them and, and find this horrifying scene in the basements. This is what really, 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 uh, what makes the, the rescue team uh, works very difficult is the, the relentless bombardments that has been raining down Duma. So what is, what is the situation right now? The situation right now is that we got about 185 people dead in, in, in Duma city. Uh, they were given no other choice, either death or evacuation, mass deportation from their own homes. I'm glad actually, I'm watching the Finnish TV, the, the 80, uh, 830 Prime news, and I, I'm really glad that they are really talking about it firsthand. This is something that I thought that would not happen, but I'm glad at least they got sense of of of, of priority in, in setting up the news, which is something that I, I can't listen to what they're talking. You know, they're probably trying to be very neutral here. However, so this is the situation after killing all these people, and uh, uh, the Jesus Islam and the civilians that left in Duma city got no other choice to but leave. And uh, so they have agreed just about six hours ago that they will all evacuate and Russian convoys will get in and uh, they will evacuate all the rest of the people that are left in Duma city to Idlib city. So this is this, uh, the latest news that has got, gotten out of Duma city from people, activists on the grounds. You know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on all those lost souls inside Syria and in Duma city. May Allah really grant them, grant them uh, patience and reward them with the highest price in heaven, inshallah. Um, I am, uh, like I promised, I will say something really quick and finish as well. So my, my people, my friends who are, who are still interested about, to hear about Syria, I will say this few words. You know, in in in, uh, in 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 an attempt to make them or help them understand what's going on in Syria. So, pardon me for just a couple minutes, a few minutes to say what I got to say in Finnish language, and I'll get back to you. And if you got any questions, I'll I'll get to you right right after the session. So just bear with me for a while, would you please? Thank you all so much. So nyt vähän suomeksi mikä nyt on tapahtunut Syyriassa viime viime yönä viime yönä kello kello yhdeksän viistoista illalla tai yöllä niin äh, Duma City, mikä on, on äh, Itä-Ruuta, mikä on äh, jäänyt edelleen, edelleen äh, tyhjentämättä, jo, jo, jossa Assad tietysti pommittaa äh, tauotta sitä aluetta, jossa asuu edelleen yli 85 000 ihmisiä. Ja äh, Jaysh islam joka hallitsee tämän alue. Assad eilen käytti taas jälleen kerran kemikaalisia aseita, jotka arvaillaan, että ne on sarinikaasu ja kloorinikaasu, jotka on sitten hermokaasu, mikä ei ole vielä ollut mitään vahvistettuja tietoa. Mutta joka tapauksessa 185 ihmisiä, 185 ihmisiä eilen kuolli ja niistä on suurin osa on naisia, lapsia ja miehiä. Suurin osa, jotka ovat piiloutuneet jo, äh, suihkutiloissa ja keittiöissä vähän kaukana niistä ulkoseinistä niistä rakennuksista, että sitten ne olisi tavalla tai toisella vähän niin kuin turvassa siinä. Mutta joka tapauksessa kaasu on päässyt heihin, heihin kiinni ja tappoi näin paljon ihmisiä. Tämä on siinä mielessä surullisinta, mitä voisi ikinä tapahtua. Varsinkin kun YK-toimistot ja tilat ja, ja, ja virkamiehet ovat muutaman kilometrin päässä. Ja nyt viimeisen, viimeisen tietojen mukaan on se, että Assad, Assad on tota vihdoinkin hyväksynyt, mitä, mitä on Venäjä on tarjonnut. Venäjä on tarjonnut täysin tyhjentämistä sille Duma City, eli Duma kaupunki, jossa asuu 85 000 ihmisiä. Kaikki sitten häädetään ulos ja se oli sitten Iranin, Iranin ainoa ehto, että ei enää siviiliä jätetään tähän näin kaikki siviilit ja myös 
vapaasyyden armeijan taistelijat kaikkia ulos sieltä. Vaikka Venäjä al- alkuvaiheessa ehdotti, että, että siviilit saa jäädä ja Venäjä myös äh, turvaa heidän turvallisuus ja turvaa heidän, heidän niinku, äh, asumista siinä niissä alueissa, että niissä saisi jäädä siinä omissa kodeissa. Mutta Iran on hylkänyt Venäjän, Venäjän tota, äh, tarjous ja pyysi ja kehotti, että ainoa vaihtoehto heille, että kaikki ulos. Ja se on yksi osa sitä demografista sotaa, mitä Iran on ollut tekemässä sen viimeisen seitsemän vuoden aikana, että häädetään kaikki sunni, sunnit sieltä Syyriästä ja tuodaan sitten toista, toista sek- etnisiä ryhmiä Syyriään ja pistetään niihin samoihin tiloihin. Ja tämä on se tilanne, tämä on se tilanne mitä nyt on Syyriassa. Se mitä mua mietityttää, the thing what I'm really worried about, what I'm really thinking about, that the international community that has done uh, or outdone themselves uh, by expelling uh, tons of Russian diplomats around the world uh, due to, of course, we all know that Russia uh, is suspected Uh, or allegedly has poisoned uh, the Skripal uh, and his daughter, the former Russian spy in um, London or in Britain. And that, of course, led to a massive, massive retaliation by the whole international community. I'm talking about everybody, all the European Union members, United States, they all uh, expelled tons of diplomats out of their countries. Uh, that is all to, to do to Russia attempt to kill two people. Now the world is watching how Russia is gassing hundreds of people. But these people are Syrians. Are they, are they, do they worth anything to you all here? Do they worth anything to the international community? Does their life or blood differs in anywhere or on any way or form or smell or shape than the other other victims around the world seriously the syrian people do deserve better they deserve uh, you know I, i've lost hope in the governments completely completely lost hope in the governments but i still have some faith in the people that are still uh, living in western societies They still got the power to do something. And I, 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 I as a Syrian, of course, uh, rely on the free will of the people living in free societies to act against any heinous crimes occurs in the, in the world. And now we've been watching continuously serious massacres that has been, you know, exceeded for over seven years. This is the eighth year right now living in. This is something... This is something beyond imagination. And yet again, imagine a war criminal that kills his people, killed over a million people. Assad used chemical weapons 217 times inside Syria. And he still have a seat in the Security Council. He still have embassies around the world that are still open. He is still... Uh, considered to be an, uh, a legitimate president to Syria. That is a shame. Seriously. This is something that we all people should feel ashamed in accepting and having this mass murderer, this animal, continuing to be in the driving seat of the Syrian crisis. The man that who butchers his people, my people, with all possible ways and means possible. This is something uh, we all should really condemn. And I join you all. You know, people say, what can we do? Nothing. What can we do? We are just one people. I don't really know. I don't really believe in that. You know, uh, every single person, if, he, if you got something in your head and you really want to do it, it is so easy. You just go and form something. Start with your circle nearby you. And that circle will just expand. And it will reach people further and then further. And your word will be heard wherever you are. Whether you are in Finland, whether you're in Sweden, Germany, uh, France, Italy, 
Chile, Argentina, United States, doesn't matter where you are. Just move. If it takes, if it, if it takes that you just go and do things all alone, at least you can sleep better saying to yourself that I have done something, that I have done something to these people. I've done something to really uh, uh, deny injustice from happening. So if your kids one day ask you, Dad, what have you done? Or Mom, what have you done? You know, have you, haven't you heard about the massacre that's been taking place in Syria for seven years? You say, son, I have done something. This is what I have done. طبعا أنا وعدت للأخوة الأخوة الناطقين باللغة العربية أن أحكي شوي بالعربي عن الموضوع بس أنا كل أمل وكل طبعا ثقة أنه وجعنا هو وجعكم وأنتم متابعين للوضع اللي عم يصير في سوريا حاليا وأنا أعتقد أنكم ملمين بكل ما يحصل في سوريا وأتمنى من كل أخوتنا العرب الموجودين في الغربة السوريين اللي قلبهم على الشعب السوري واللي قلبهم مع الشعب السوري اللي عم يتابع آلام الشعب السوري خاصة بعد المجزرة اللي صارت امبارح لله المشتكى فأتمنى من كل إنسان حر سوري أو غير سوري أنه يقوم في دوره في أي مكان كان يا أخي ولو شغلة بسيطة تواصل مع شخص في الداخل السوري وادعم ادعم صمود هؤلاء الناس لا تقول أنا ما فيني أعمل شيء الله أنعم علينا بالخروج من سوريا الله أنعم علينا في البقاء في بلد آمن بلد ديمقراطي حر أه اعمل اي شيء يا اخي الكثير منا يجلس ويلعن الظلام يعني يقول لعن اخت الظلام هذا ف... ولكن هو القليل منا كم انسان منا يشعل شمعه في هذا الظلام هذا ف ما بدك تشتغل على الاقل في ناس لسه ما بدها تشتغل وما بتخلي حدا يشتغل كمان هي مصيبه اعظم يعني مو بس انه ما بيشتغل في ناس في فئه كبيره من الناس طبعا هدول الرمادين اللي عم بحكي عنهم في كثير ناس لا بتحب تشتغل ولا بتحب حدا يشتغل بمعنى انه اذا اذا هو ما اشتغل فالمفروض الثانيين كمان ما يشتغلوا، واذا اشتغلوا هدول الثانيين وسووا اي شيء فبينزلوا فيه بقى بيغسلوا بيعملوه حرامي، بيعملوه متسلق، وبيعملوه انه صار عنده حسابات بالبنوك وهالامور امور هي، فهذا امر مخزي وحقير وطبعا مرفوض جدا. ف اذا ما فيك تعمل اي شيء فاصمت ولا تفتح تمك. ف انا بنصح كل اخوان انا زرت المانيا من فتره قريبه وهو معلوماتي اللي اللي خبر خبرنا خبرونا فيها الشباب انه في حوالي 700 الف سوري موجود في المانيا 700 الف سوري موجود في المانيا وهذا يعني رقم خيالي يعني خلي يكون 100 الف قلب قلب على بعض والله بنخرب الدنيا ب 100 الف 100 الف تعمل شغله كبيره من كل شخص يورو يورو بالشهر هي 100 الف كل شهر كل شهر 100,000 هي بتنزل هي قديش بتشيل عائلات في الداخل السوري؟ قديش بتطعم فيها ناس في الداخل السوري؟ حسبي الله ونعم الوكيل، حسبي الله ونعم الوكيل. لكن للاسف لا حدا بده يشتغل ولا بخلوا حدا يشتغل، يعني لا بيرحموا حدا ولا بخلوا رحمه الله تنزل، لله المشتكى. أه بارك الله فيكم اخواني الكريم الكرام، الله يبارك فيكم، هي اخونا عبد الوهاب كمان موجود، ان شاء الله كمان الف مبروك مره ثانيه لك اخي عبد الوهاب، واشكركم على الاصطاب الطيبه في المانيا، وان شاء الله ربي عز وجل معنا مره ثانيه مع بعض. Allah barak fikun. So I would uh, answer if there's any questions. I am really sorry. I mean, the, the text, the, the, the messages are coming really fast. I can't really keep up with all of them. So if you got any particular question you want to shoot, shoot right ahead. I'll, I'll be more than happy and honored to answer your questions if you got any related to Syria and related to the humanitarian crisis that is happening right now inside Syria or to the massacre that, led, that took place yesterday. The attack in Duma was mentioned in the news in the UK. Well, that's a great thing. That is a great thing. Ahla wa sahla fiqh, Akhim Muhammad al-Khatib. Any questions? Let me just see if I can scroll back, if there's any questions. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, you people are really making my work very challenging. I mean, writing, writing in, in Spanish, Italian. I'd love to really get back to you all. Uh, well, Andrea, I'm glad to hear that as well, that you guys heard the news in, in Germany. Um, if there's any questions, see if I get any here. Yeah, thank you, Marcella. Thank you so much. Yes. You know, Syrian people seven years ago took the streets to breathe freedom. They didn't ask to breathe 
sarin gas or chlorine gas. This is, this is the result of the world betraying my people, betraying the Syrian people. Why on earth the whole world can live in democracy in a free country except us in the Arab world? Uh, just a week ago when the Egyptian president or the guy who overthrew the democratic government with a military coup, uh, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, uh, this guy uh, was elected again by a result of 99.2. That is a disgrace. And some leaders of the free world calling him up and congratulate him. Right. So this is the, 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 the tragedy we are living in. The Arabs cannot live in a free country. And the Western world are part of this big uh, tragedy we are living in. They are blessing these dictators to stay in power. They don't want a democratic government to, to take over and run people's uh, interests. Um, so... Um, how can we help? Right, so uh, how can you help? Well, there are tons of people who are operating inside Syria, helping those displaced. Christina, is that? Yeah, that's your question. There are tons of people, like I said, like there's tons of NGOs, a lot of people working inside the ground, in Syria, on the ground, and they are operating in helping these displaced refugees coming out of Eastern Ghouta. And this help is very much needed. And uh, we ought to support them. We need to support these people with whatever we got. You know, if you guys want to know who they are, send me a private message and I'll send you directly the full uh, details of these people. Right now, we've got a campaign, a fundraising campaign to help uh, Ruta as well. Uh, we've launched it about a couple weeks ago. But unfortunately, the, the account for the NGO, the British NGO that I'm cooperating with, they have issues with PayPal. PayPal have set restrictions to all donations going to Syria. So they needed to know more about how we are going to do the work. And I'm looking forward to hear good news next week. So we'll, our campaign will be live again. Our target is about $5,000 or euros. I don't know what it was. I really hope you all can share it. And the link is, is in one of my posts. If you scroll back a couple days back or about five, six days, you will find my campaign link in there. Hold on, guys. No, please, English. No, Spanish. No, hablo español. I can use Google Translate, but not right here. Protest. You know, a lot of people talk about protesting. I don't really see in protesting any, any results whatsoever. Really, we've done we've done tons of protests. Yeah, it, it just it's it's in one way or another. Of course, it will help our conscience that we've done something. But in, to be honest with you, it doesn't really help. I I'd rather. I'd rather we really talk to our closest p people in our closest circle and we raise funds. And when it's, when it's raised and we've collected some sum or whatever amount of money, that we can look for a, a local people on the ground to really do the hard work because there are tons of work that needs to be done inside Syria. What else we got here? So let's... Uh, I'll stick around for a little more if you guys want to know. So like I've said uh, in a nutshell, uh, in the next five days, about 80,000 or 85,000 people left in Duma City. They will be evacuated uh, with the, of course, uh, the supervision of the Russians. Of course, the, the, the other criminal in Syria. So imagine you kill people and then you make sure that they are evacuated. So the same killer is doing pretty much the same job. And the whole, the whole world is doing absolutely nothing, zip, nothing. They're just watching and they are just flipping the channels as if nothing is taking, taking place at all. And that is the shame. That is the, really the shame in us. And some people, even when they see any news coming out of Syria or about Syria, they just change the channel. And even Syrians are doing that, even Syrians. And you ask, what exactly... What exactly did you do? Why did you change the channel? I was sitting in a, in a, in a friend's place once, or not a friend, a, a guy invited us and he had TV on and then the news coming out of Syria and he changed the channel and he put some sports. And I was like, what did you do? I said, oh, we got tired, you know, we we're fed up with the news. And I just packed and left. I didn't even stay a minute. 
I was like, you people are from another goddamn planet. I am not going to sit here another goddamn minute. The help and the most humanitarian crisis is by supporting with funds. The problem for most is how how to find reliable NGOs. Yes, that is true. That is absolutely true. There are a lot of there are tons of NGOs around the world right now claiming that they're operating for Syria. But you got to find people on the ground, you know. There are people on the ground operating well. They're doing a great job. I can I can name you tons of them. I can name you at least 5 or 10. If you're interested in know who who do I recommend, just drop me a line on my inbox and I'll let you know. I'll give you all the details you need. And rest assured, every single dime you send, it will go to Syria. Hey, Mexico. Love you all, guys. Really. I wish one day you guys can invite me over and see how does it look like over there. By the way, have you got any Syrian community in Mexico? Christina? Or, or you you don't have any idea. Okay, all right, right. Hamoudi, thank you so much, man. Appreciate it so much. Allah barik fiq, inshallah. Yiftah alayna wa alik. Bea, thank you so much as well. Thank you for being and sticking around for great support as well. Uh, Brigitte uh, Kiel, my friend, how you doing? Merhaba, merhaba. I'm I'm seeing that your Arabic is getting well. Right. Doctor Usama Darwish. Bad Zaman ya Rajul. Where are you, Doctor? Samana Sota Kahiana. Let's take it. Khalik. Nihaya Walla Khalas. Yani. Nsitna. Mishtaba Dawli. Mishtaba Dawli Hakir. Anna Mark Bikil Kilme. Sadakt. Allah is the Halik. Shufahi. Who will Mushtama be Shakil Am? Mushtama Mujrim. وهل المجرمين هدول شغلتهم يدعموا المجرمين تبعهم في مناطقنا سواء كان في مصر أو في اليمن أو في ليبيا أو في العراق أو أو سوريا أو في أي مكان هؤلاء المجرمين هم من وضع هؤلاء النواطير على على رؤوس شعوبهم في سوريا ومن سبع سنين لما بدأت الأرض تتزلزل تحت أقدام هؤلاء النواطير فزع الغرب المجرم أنا أراه المجرم لنصرة هؤلاء شافوا أن الموضوع صعب فبدأوا بدعم الحركات اللي هي بالطالب بإعادة بالثورات المضادة أو ما يسمى الثورات المضادة وهذا الشيء طبعا أدى لإعادة تعويم الأنظمة السابقة للأسف والشعوب نايمة للأسف 100 مليون إنسان في مصر يهلل للسيسي وهذا أكبر أكبر طبعا مأساة إنسانية للأسف حياك الله أخي الله يبارك فيك why is this happening? Why is this happening? It's, it's a punishment. You mean, if you're talking about the chemical attack, chemical attack that took place in Syria, it is just very simple. They, they, they were given a choice to either stay uh, or leave. And they said we will leave only as an armed groups, but the civilians wanted to stay. Uh, that didn't really go well. They, they, they didn't want this uh, deal to, to, to be implemented. So they punished them with the sarin gas, the chemical weapons. This is what happened. Um, my son, Nicholas, is helping with kids. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about Turkey's policy? Po- Turkey's policy, of course, uh, it got... Of course, you got to remember Turkey is in the front line of this whole crisis. Turkey got 920 kilometers with Syria and they definitely got their own reasons and and, and uh, understandable reasons to defend its own in, uh, home land security. And whatever they do inside Syria or whatever related to Syria, they are trying to uh, push away the threat that is posed by the 
uh, terrorist organizations known as the PKK, YPG, and YPD. These are all the same, the same name. With uh, you know, uh, so these are one body, one organization, but with three different names. So regardless, regardless, Turkey has managed successfully with the support of the Free Syrian Army on the ground to push back the PKK from these controlled areas that are been uh, occupied for a while. So uh, I salute here uh, the efforts that Turkey Turkey has been uh, doing inside Syria. Uh, of course, as a Syrian, I don't want Syria to be occupied, but right now the whole world is occupying Syria. So so I would say that if, if you got an occupier with you, helping you, uh, stay in your country. That is that is for now, fine. Turkey is very misunderstood. That is true. I value your opinion and I acknowledge. Yeah, thank you, Judith. Yes, it is. They don't understand. You know, those who are barking about Turkey, they are thousands of miles away from this conflict. They don't even have an idea what's going on inside Syria, and they have no, they have no interest in being on the ground. So they can bark whatever they want all day long. I don't really give a gr- give a crap. And I'm going to say this in a very nutshell. Without Turkey, there will now we've got about a million dead. Without Turkey's help, we would have a couple million dead. Turkey's ho- holding about 3.5 million Syrian refugees inside Sir- inside Turkey and they're taking care of them. When you come to, back to Germany, uh next week I'll be in Germany again on Tuesday in Düsseldorf. So if you guys are there, come by, say hello. And after that, I'll move on to Köln. I got other prospects to attend as well. So uh, come around, say hello. Can the American government help? Yes, they can dumb the crap out of the the Assad regime. That's the only thing they can do. And they know exactly where he he is. They know exactly where he sleeps. They know exactly what he eats and where he shits. So stop pretending that they, they cannot solve the problem. If the Americans would would have bombed the presidential palace in Damascus, we wouldn't be in this shithole for seven years. But the Americans didn't want. Barack Obama was too pussy to act. Coward-ass president. Who gave the space and the land and, 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 uh, to the Russians to do whatever they want. And we all know Vladimir Putin, the former spy, what he wants. Yes, I do speak Finnish. Abdul Raza Muhammad Noor. Mä oon erittäin paholla niin mä oon kyllä, mä oon kyllä puhunut, puhunut tuossa muutaman minuutin asia, asiasta ja, ja korostin mitä on tapahtunut, tai puhuin vähän siitä, että mitä eilen on tapahtunut Syyriassa ja, ja, ja selitin koko tilanne. Jos haluat inshallah, niin sä voisit vähän katsoa sen myöhemmin, mitä on tapahtunut. Mutta jos sulla on jotain kysyttävää Syyriaan, Syyriaan niin kuin liittyviä asioita, niin ihan ilo mieli vastata. What do you think about maybe happening in the following days in Duma? Well, I have just said, I, I will say again, what is going to happen in the next days. So tomorrow, the evacuation, the mass evacuation will be starting. So a lot of people will be, uh, will be coming out from, uh, from Duma City to Idlib. And there will be buses to load the civilians, whatever left of the civilians, out of Duma City. So then after that, it will be a no man's land. It will be an empty, it will be ghost town. Like the rest of the other cities, we're talking about Harastar, being Tel... Uh, uh, Arbin, uh, you know, my memories are really, really, really not helping me right now. So the rest of those cities that has been uh, uh, evacuated in uh, eastern Ghouta, it's it's a no man's zone right now. And we all know that Assad has granted over two hundred thousand new nationality to another ethnic ethnic groups coming uh, from Iraq and, of course, Iran. As well, so he granted a Syrian national, so they will be living in these areas instead of the Sunnis. That's the demographic war we're talking about. Doctor Muhammad Attash, Hayak Allah, we barak fiq, Allah karmak ya Rabb. Yes, Obama did really sold the Syrians for his own interest. He wanted to be known as a president who didn't enter a war. But that's a big mistake when you are occupying half of the world and when you got over 600,000 American soldiers around the world in over 200 countries. And when it comes down to Syria, he chickens out and behaves like a fucking pussy. He 
Yeah, man, I'm sorry too. I'm sorry too, brother. I asked you two questions at the beginning. Hope you all will answer later. Um, Dia, I'm really sorry. In the beginning, I was so so caught up with my thoughts. Could you please, please write them again, Dia, please? What, exa what exactly conflict? The oil? Well, oil is a big part of it. Energy, actually. Energy and oil. We all know that Syria got about eight, eight, 84 trillion cubic meters of untouched gas. And Russia is extremely keen to be controlling that, that part. And of course, this is all about energy. If that gas gets out without the control of Russia, Russia will be bankrupt because half of his 60% of its gas goes to Europe. And we all know what happens if nobody buys Russian gas. Uh, all those with power in the world do not do anything for Syria. Yeah, that's true. Uh, inshallah, inshallah. Allahumma ameen. Allah ibarak fiki, Kamila. Muhaddeen min al-Quds. Alf tahiyya al-Ikhwanna fi al-Quds. Allah ibarak fiik. U ijbar bi khatrak. Hayyak Allah. سؤال سؤال حيرني ماذا لم يدخلوا لإيقاف الحرب وما رأيك مين دي يدخل إيقاف الحرب يا أخي حدا فاضي لحدا كل الشغلة كلها مسؤوليات ومصالح وتوزيع أدوار هالأمور هاي يعني كلتنا بنعرف هذا الشيء يعني يعني تركيا عضوة في الناتو صح لما تركيا هددت من قبل إرهابيين في سوريا البي كي كي والدواعش مين قتل نصرة تركيا عضوة في الناتو المفروض أمريكا كله يتحول كله يجي لنصرة عضوة في الناتو ولكن تركيا هي عضوة في الناتو يعني من ميثاقات اتفاقية الناتو أو عضوية الناتو أنه إذا أحد الأعضاء هذا الجسم اللي هو اسمه الناتو تعرض إلى خطر فلازم كل باقي الأعضاء يهبوا إلى نصرة هذا العضو لكن هذا الشيء ما صار في تركيا بده يصير في سوريا فما حدا فير معه الدم الصوري رخيص للاسف اخي فوضي الله يبارك فيك اخي مهدين حياك الله روكزانا اد لاف تو جيت يور يور كويستشن بت اي ريلي كان نوت ريلي انديرستاند وات يو ار توكين اباوت اي مايت ليتر ترانسليت وات يو سيد اند رايت يو ذا انسر رايت باك ابريشيت ات سو ماتش بت اف يو كيد سبيك انجلش اند هيت مي ذا كويستشن ان انجلش اي بي مور ذان هابي تو جيت باك تو يو رايت اواي Dia, please, I'm still waiting for your questions. Just copy-paste your first questions because I got like tons of questions right here and I don't know how to uh, find it right here. Where is it? Yeah, here you go. Uh, will someone bring Assad uh, one day to court and what will happen with Idlib? Well, first part of your question, Dia, I am pretty sure that we've got tons of evidence against Assad and it's been collected every day. Only one man alone called Caesar has leaked over 10 or 16,000 uh, pictures and files and documents that has been leaked to the uh, court of law in the Hague. And these people are working hard, I believe, to collect evidence against the Assad regime and all his figures. So that what is happening right now, I've spoken once to, to the uh, Secretary General of the United Nations uh, uh, war crime department uh, uh, director and I have asked him pretty much the same question and he told me that we are uh, tirelessly collecting evidence against the Assad regime and rest assured he will be uh, charged with war crimes and he will be brought to justice. The second question, what happens with Idlib? Idlib now, it's becoming, becoming a city of deported people. There are people from Hama, Homs, Id, uh, Aleppo, and now Ghuta and Dara even. So it's a city, it's a city for the people who got no city. So it's overpopulated. There is about three million people in Idlib city and about another three and a half million living in Idlib city's suburbs, in the uh, countrysides and also Idlib countrysides in refugee camps. So these people are a time bomb. They could, they could be targeted and they have been targeted in the past couple weeks and cap, cap, past couple months as well, they've been targeted and they've been bombed. We all know every now and then the rich Assad regime and Russia bombs the city of Idlib. And I got relatives in Idlib and I get, I get updates and news every day from there. So uh, 
uh, I really hope the people of Idlib uh, can really support the people of Ghouta, like they've supported the people from Aleppo who have been evacuated. So, inshallah, ahani ahalina fi Idlib, taftahu aydikum, wa tahtudnu al-ukhwa min al-Ghouta bi qulub, bi qulub wasi'a, inshallah, wa tarhamuhum fi al-ajarat, wa tmiddu idun yad al-Aun, wa inshallah, Rabbi Azza wa Jal, bi barik fikun, wa bi juhudkum, inshallah. So, Erika, again, you're gone again to Spanish. Stop it, Erika. I can't do Spanish right now. All right, so uh, I've talked enough, and I, I think I have covered pretty much all the points I need. If there's any other questions still, I'll be more than happy to get, get it to you answered. So, what do we got here? What do people in Duma need most now? Uh, well, the people in Duma right now needs to get out of there first. And once they are out, like you know, they're out with only whatever they got on them. So they pr pretty much need everything. They need, uh, they need uh, clothes. They need uh, medicine because a lot of them are, uh, are sick and ill and injured. So pretty much everything. Food, clothes, medicine, water, clothes, uh, tents, whatever related to tents. Uh, so that's what they need. Ah, Thayer, Jazakallah Khair, wa iyaakum, inshaAllah, hayaakallah, akhi Thayer. Orhan, Salam alaikum, Abe. I can speak a few words in Turkish. I can go for that. Salam, Rami, uh, thank you for your work. What can we do? To help Syrians, I think Turkey is not not uh, withholding any efforts to help Syrians. The, Turkey is doing an amazing job inside Syria and also in Turkey. And may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bless Turkey and the Turkish people for their immense support. And I would like to give my great shout out to the Ihaha and the Red Crescent, the Turkish Red Crescent, for doing an amazing job. Just for your info, try not to promote PayPal. Yeah, that's true. They have blocked Palestine from receiving any transfer to Palestine. That is true. That is true. That is true. But, I mean, uh, if uh, the payments, if any payments made to an account that is helping Syria, uh, you should not mention Syria or Palestine. Then it will go away. You should write gifts to the kids or whatever. As a code a code uh, uh, word, then it will go through. Right. Uh, okay. Box. Okay. What do we got here? Uh, thank you, Bach. Thank you so much, man. Keep the supporting. Keep praying. Thank you so much. All right. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up here. Uh, thank you all so much. Uh, I got I got some tons of messages coming up coming on to me on on WhatsApp and other other social media. So I'm gonna get back to you. Uh, how do you get to Syria? I don't have no clue. I don't really I don't really know at all. Right now, borders are really tight, and not anybody can get in. People with license get in, can get in, but nobody else. This is the this is the situation right now. Um, greatly appreciate it. HQ, thank you so much. What is the biggest obstacles facing humanitarian organizations to reach people on the ground in Duma? You see, there's nobody right now in Duma. You know, the, 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 the people will be evacuated and they will be placed in the Idlib city or the uh, refugee camps in Idlib countryside. So what, what obstacles that we, they're facing is, is pretty much getting out of there safely. We all know the Assad regime and his thugs uh, surrounding the city, they are humiliating and even sometimes shooting at the buses. And uh, this is something that we have seen in the past couple of weeks, unfortunately. And once they are out, they are definitely in need of everything possible. You just name it. Tina German, uh, you come over here? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I'd like to get that. I'll translate that and get back to you, Tina. Well, I hope they are protected and uh, 
Um, I think the Turkish side side should not gamble on the Syrian revolution in favor of his country built deal. Well, you see, right now the only active part that we've had or partner we've had we have in in Syria, I'm talking about actively involved in supporting Syria are uh, the Turkish government and of course the the army that is supporting the Free Syrian Army. This is the only hope we got. Nobody else is really involved as much as the Turkish right now, the, Tur- the Turks right now on the ground. So, so some people say, uh, well, they have uh, bombed certain this and bombed certain that. I say that uh, in regard of Afrin, for example, you know, if you just compare the picture of Afrin from, a, from top picture, <clears throat> you will see the difference between Afrin and Raqqa, for example, or between Afrin and Deir Zor or Hasaka, or even Aleppo, or now Douma, or Eastern Ghouta. There, the, you cannot even compare. You know, we're talking about a criminal re- regime that can that can bomb everything flat in order to get in. But the operation that has been led in in Afrin is called the Olive Branch. It has been the most sophisticated, the most clean uh, military operations I've ever seen in the past seven years. So, uh, with that regard, with that has been said, now the people are starting to get back to Afrin. And people will really settle again. You know, this is this is what we really hope for, and hopefully, a lot of people will move back to Afrin from Turkey and live back in their own country instead of being refugees somewhere else. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Anna Underwood Maxwell. Good to see you here as well. Haven't haven't heard from you in a while. Mercedes, uh, thank you so much. Keep praying. Bless your heart. How can we help? Uh, Bea is asking that she... Well, I have just said we've got uh, many campaigns that we are running right now. And there are also tons of NGOs that are operating on the ground. You know, the, if you are interested in knowing more details, please send me a private message and I will definitely get back to you. I'll provide you with tons of information. Gui Karelios, kiva nähdä sua myös täälläkin. Terveisiä rouvalle ja... On, ja hauskaa kevättä. Right, so I'm gonna sign out. This is the final thing. So if you got any question, drop me an inbox, a private message. I'll be more than honored and, and, and grateful to, to all the questions and I'll definitely answer them. Thank you all so much. Uh, God bless you. Barakallah fikum. Inshallah ta'ala. Nitkallam bi'idhnillah ta'ala maratani fi munasabi ukhra, inshallah. السلام عليكم